All right, let's get some more practice drawing free body diagrams. So I'll read this to you. Initially, a block is located at point A down here on a ramp, and it's being held at this instant uh, pressed against a spring. Uh, the natural length of the spring is this, is this uh, indicated by the spring in light gray below it. So the natural length of the spring, spring is a lot sh longer than the length of the spring when the block is at position A. Right, so therefore the spring is initially compressed a considerable amount. I want to tell you that there is friction between the ramp and the block. And when the block is released, the spring pushes the block up the ramp. Uh, when the block reaches point B, it has lost contact with the spring. And the block keeps on going past B. I'm showing you here out at point C, where the, the block has le uh, lost contact with the ramp. And at point C, I'm telling you a little bit more information. At this point, the block is still traveling upward and has not yet reached its highest point. So C, it's point C, the block is still traveling to the left and still traveling upward as well. All right, so in this problem, the task is to draw a free body diagram of the block um, at location A immediately, immediately after it is released. We want to draw a free body diagram of the block when it is at location B. And we want to draw a free body diagram of the block when it is at location C. So there we have it. Actually, why don't you get started and then you can check your um, answers with mine in just a moment. All right, so here we are. I've got my drawing of the system, the block in positions A, B, and C as described before, now it's time to draw a free body diagram. And the obvious question comes in, uh, what does a free body diagram depict? What does it show? Yeah, you should know this by now. A free body diagram shows forces, of course, right? Forces, we know what forces are. Forces are things that push and pull on your object. In this case, the object is this box, right? In addition, Forces are vectors, yeah? And forces are interactions between bodies, right? In this case, we'll have interactions with the spring and with the ramp and with gravity and all that good stuff, right? All right, so let's start drawing a free body diagram of this box when, it at, when it's at point A. So at, say at A. What are the forces acting on this thing? All right, well, first of all, we have gravity, right? Gravity is a force. Gravity is something that's pulling downward. Pulling downward so that makes a vector, which I will indicate as such. Vectors in my free body diagram are arrows that point in the direction in which the force acts. I also have to label vectors in my free body diagram. So I'll call my weight, or the force of gravity, I'll call that W. And because it's a vector, it has to be labeled as a vector. So I put a little arrow above it to indicate that W, the symbol W, is a vector. It's not a scalar. All right, what else is pushing or pulling on my box here? Well, at point A, the box is in contact with the spring, right? So the spring acts on the body by either pushing or pulling. All right, so what I have here is a spring. It's a plastic spring that I 3D printed. But nonetheless, the spring has a, what's a natural length, a length at which it sort of, I guess, likes to be at, although I don't like to say something inanimate, like something, but it's the natural length at which it sits at. If I compress the spring, if I push on the spring, then I can get it to be shorter, right? When I compress the spring, I have to push the spring out and the spring pushes back against my fingers. Yes, we see that. So the spring provides a force if you compress it. And that's what we did in our case. In fact, our spring was oriented at an angle. But nonetheless, the spring pushes on the box. Therefore, on my free body diagram, I represent that spring force as a vector, like so, in the direction of the spring, pushing upward and to the left. And again, I have to label it. I'll call it S. And of course, put a little arrow above it to indicate that it is a vector. So there's my spring force. All right, cool. Two forces down. What else do we have pushing on the block? Again, forces are interactions between bodies. One of those bodies is the block. That's the one we're drawing the free body diagram for. What else is interacting? 
Gravity was the earth pulling down on the block. Spring force was the spring pushing on the block. The spring and the block were in contact with each other. Uh, the block is also in contact with the ramp too, right? So let's put the force from the ramp in there. Now the force from the ramp is one I'm going to split up into two pieces because the force from the ramp does two different things. The first piece is going to be a piece that's perpendicular to the ramp. I'm going to draw it right here like so. It's the piece that I call the normal force, and I'll give it the, the symbol N, of course, put the arrow above it. Now, the word normal in normal force, it's just a fancy way of saying perpendicular, right? So the surface between the block and the ramp looks like so, this little purple line right there, and the normal force just means perpendicular to that surface. That's all it means. Okay, so don't get it fooled by the word normal. Normal means just perpendicular. So I'm, I'm creating a, or at least I'm depicting my force, as I said, in two pieces. One of those pieces is this direction perpendicular to that surface. So what does that normal force do? Well, I've got a, I've got a ramp right here, a little piece of wood here, and a, a block that can, that can go on the ramp. And what is that, that normal force? What the normal force does is that right it's the force that keeps the block from falling through the ramp from penetrating through the ramp it's the force that the the ramp needs to push on the block so that it doesn't fall through that's all it is it's really that simple now the other component of the force between the ramp and the block is tangent to the ramp yeah this is the force that inhibits sliding right the sliding action again, is tangent to the ramp. So if the block is sliding, let's see, in your case, the block is sliding this way, right? These two surfaces are not perfectly slippery. They scrape, they rub, they, they scour each other, right? This interaction between the two bodies that inhibits this sliding motion is your friction. Now your block is heading up the ramp, like so, so therefore there's a friction on that block pointing in the opposite direction. There's your friction, there's your other force. Or really, I should say, the other component of that force between the ramp and the block. Okay, so to finish up this free body diagram at point A, all I need to do is add in that friction force, and I'll label this as F for friction. Okay, so now that we're finished with the free body diagram at point A, let's go to point B, right? It's this point over here where uh, the block is still heading up the ramp. It's separated from the spring now. At point B, gravity is still pulling down on the box, right? So let me definitely include the weight, just as we did before. The block B is still... Uh, pushing against the ramp, and the ramp is pushing back on block B. So it still has a normal force there that's keeping the, the block from penetrating through the ramp. Also, block B is sliding on the ramp, right? So you still have that scraping. You still have that friction force in there. So we'll include that one as well. So those are the same as before. What about the spring force? Yeah, what about the spring force? Block B isn't touching the spring anymore, but it's still feeling the effect of the spring, isn't it? The spring is what gave it its push. It's still experiencing the effect of that push as it's still heading up the hill, right? But remember what a force is. A force is a push or pull, right? It's an interaction between bodies. At time B, at the moment we're at point B here, the spring, is, again, is no longer touching right? So it's no longer directly interacting with the body. It's no longer pushing on that body. So I do not put the spring force on there. The only forces acting on the body at point B are the weight, right? The earth is still pulling on point B and the, the, the forces from the ramp, the two components of the forces from the ramp, because the ramp is still in contact with the body, but the spring no longer in there. All right, so that's it for B. Finally, we're going to point C. C's out here where the 
where the box has become a projectile. Yes, yeah, so let's let's finish this off. Here we go. Highlight box at point C. So we'll go ahead and just do these one by one again. Yeah. So um, let's go. We got weight. Yeah, that's that's the no-brainer. Yeah, we always have earth pulling down on this thing, so we'll definitely include this. Um, next thing, let's talk about the forces between the ramp and point C. Yeah, this is the normal force and the friction. Well, at point C, there is no ramp, right? Point C, the object is airborne. Point C is no longer touching the ramp. There, we don't put the normal force, we don't put the friction in there. We don't put the spring force in there, just for the same reasons we did earlier, right? It's no, it's no longer touching the spring still. So, is that it? Well, remember point C isn't all the way to the top yet even, right? It's still headed up. It's still headed up. Because it's still headed up, I know there's an inclination, an inclination to put some sort of other entity on this thing. Maybe it's a velocity. Yeah. Maybe it's a momentum. Yeah, shouldn't there be something else on this thing? <laughs> it's still headed up. Yeah. But well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Momentum's not totally out of the picture yet. Remember, uh, Newton's second law says that the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. Um, maybe we'll talk about it if we haven't yet. Um, this acceleration is a time derivative of, of momentum. So yeah, something like a momentum is in the physics here. But one has to be careful. What we're putting on a free body diagram is not the right-hand side. It's not the change in momentum piece. It's the forces. The forces are the pushes and the pulls, right? They're the interactions between the bodies. And the only thing that's, well, actually, there's nothing touching the body right now, right? So the spring can't do it. The ramp can't do it. The only thing pulling on the body is this, is the earth, right? Earth can pull at a distance. You have to be, don't have to be in contact with the Earth for the Earth to pull down on it. Gra that's how gravity works. It's a force at a distance. So we do have the weight that goes on a free body diagram. But anything else, any momentum or velocity or whatever you're thinking about here, whatever it is, it doesn't belong on a free body diagram. It doesn't belong on a free body di diagram because it's not a force. Right? The only force at point C is the weight. And this, my friends, my students, these are our free body diagrams at points A, B, and C. Over and out.